This is my video. I own this video. You might say I possess it. Hey there, welcome back to True North Reviews. My name is Ryan, and today we are discussing the new Joy Wave album, Possession. Joy Wave, not to be confused with the kitchen appliance, Microwave, are an indie rock band, and yes, that confusion could easily happen if you're not up to date with indie rock. Joy Wave actually fly under the radar so much that I almost uh, didn't know about this release from them until about a week prior, and that is shocking, that is sad, because I'm a pretty big fan of theirs. I would go so far to say that they're one of my favorite indie rock outfits from the 2010s. So yes, I hope that will only teach me to give their record label, Hollywood, a bit more respect in the future because I disrespected them today. I am sorry. Anyways, I initially fell in love with Joy Wave for their debut record it came out back in 2015. It's called How Do You Feel Now? It had gorgeous synth work, absolutely enthralling atmospheres, no shortage of catchy hooks, and even some quirky and fun interludes to keep me coming back for more. Funny enough, the one song that you might recognize Joy Wave for, it's not even on that album. It's not even by them. It's actually a feature on Big Data's Dangerous, which I will have linked down below in case you're curious, but I'm sure if you're aware of Joy Wave, you'd already know the song. You might even know a bit about the front man too, uh, Daniel Armbruster, who has a super cool mustache, he's a super cool guy along with the rest of the band. As a characteristic of Joy Wave, their lyrical style tends to revolve around introspection and casually breaking the fourth wall every now and then. Daniel certainly has a knack for wordplay as that was the main focus on Joy Wave's sophomore record content or content depending on the context of how you want to delineate between them and the happiness that goes along with it. Now, many interpretations can rule and dictate this new album Possession and its title as it deals with the idea of control or being possessed by an evil spirit. Arguably, one of those interpretations can also include a political sense of the word control as Daniel and the group set their sights on a shocking music video put out in conjunction with their second single, Like a Kennedy. Obviously, some people might not be fond of the graphic depiction of a modernized Kennedy assassination, but to me I love the cyclical nature of the video and what it was conveying about history repeating itself. The narrative of this entire record goes beyond simple politics though, and it is compelling as it talks about control, or lack thereof, especially when it comes to our surroundings. It's more about putting us as people in the driver's seat to decide how we react and overcome hardships in our lifetime. So as you would likely guess, that only makes it that much more important to be hearing this record in the context of the coronavirus and all the other big headlines that are demanding our attention 24-7 lately. Tackling themes of exhaustion, media, fear, and insecurities, Joy Wave set the stage and deliver with frantic, urgent, and ambitious soundscapes. Some of the sounds on this record were actually sampled from the 1977 Carl Sagan curated Voyager Golden Record, which was sent to space along with many human traits that were recorded to define humans, including greetings in multiple languages, the human heartbeat, ocean waves. And this Joy Wave record possession in combination with those samples from the Golden Record is instantly and noticeably the most appealing of the Joy Wave discography. Daniel Armbruster continues to refine his impressive production skills as majority of this album is self-produced, proving that front men of bands are more than just a vocalist. Daniel is like this jack of all trades as much as the rest of the group are talented multi-instrumentalists. I firmly believe Possession is the most masterfully produced Joy Wave record to date, where certain songs in the past might have had the bite and crunch of rock and the spacey synth atmospheres, everything this go around is just tightened up, is made rich, it's lush, and intricately woven in its texture. Joy Wave are taking bigger risks on Possession as well with what sounds they use to fill space. I know it's a lot more than ever that there are these ticks or clicks softly heard in the background, whether it's from the auxiliary percussion, subdued synth, lower end bass, trap style hi-hats, just these little rewards of listening, especially with your headphones on. Songs like Who Owns Who and the title track, all encouraging of using your headphones. It's not just something that you're going to want to play on the speaker of your iPhone, although 
I wouldn't recommend that for any album to begin with. The bottom line is that there is a lot of texture to discover on Possession, even multiple listens later. For example, there are haunting keyboards and synths like on Blank Slate, spacious atmosphere and setting like we're shooting into outer space on the Queen-esque cut like a Kennedy, the swinky electro beat on Fear, I could go on and on, but two of my favorite cuts from this project are entitled Funny Thing About Opinions and Blast Off, the former of which features a super catchy chorus and beautiful uh, vocal harmonies underlying a quirky instrumental disco drum beat and eccentric delivery in the verses. The latter of the songs, Blast Off, has this urgent and explosive wall of sound. It's a rock rager that has crunching guitars, overblown audio too, but it still fits the spacey theme of the lyrics. The interesting detail with Blast Off is how it's the oldest song on the album. It came out in 2018. It's aged pretty well though. I know it can be the unfortunate case of being stale for a lot of singles that are released years before they see the light of an album to be on, but everything comes together really well with Blast Off. I know I mentioned the two previous tracks as being favorites of mine, but neither compare to the euphoria and pure joy that I get with the track Half Your Age. As the title would suggest, deals with the concept of time and age. Very wisely and intelligently, Daniel pens a song that tells the listener it's okay to change your dreams as you get older. Also kind of going against the seize the day sentiment. You're allowed to go with the flow and not pressure yourself with the timing of when your decisions are made. I just think that Half Your Age is a brilliant coming of age lesson that many people are quick to brush off because they're too busy looking at their watch like they have another place to be. Musically, the track Half Your Age is nothing short of spectacular too. I love the mantra like repeated chorus lines of brush it all, brush it all away, or laugh it all, laugh it all away. The bass lines are infectious, the vocal harmonies in the chorus are earwormy, and it's just a perfect song. Musically, Maintaining the value on possession, we have the closing cut, Mr. Eastman, which has some guitar and bass steal the spotlight here with some irregular rhythms on the drums, almost like a polyrhythm once the vocals wash over the chorus, which I do love the stretched out melody to it as well, dazzling falsettos for sure. And I want to mention Who Owns Who again for its reverberating and echoed vocals, as well as the theremin, which adds to the strange and bizarre atmosphere that this record emits. In addition to Who Owns Who being strong musically, it is also witty in its lyrical department. This time we're discussing the topic of people owning others, and if you have to ask who owns who, it definitely can't be you. At the end of the day, with me listening to this record, even the worst part on this record isn't even that much of a low point in my opinion. The track No Shoulder would be my least favorite song on this project. For me, I just feel like the, the bass line is too constant, and it just keeps going when you think Joy Wave could have played with the song's dynamics a bit more, at least with the final mix, instead of having the bass so thick, up front, and distracting. It's okay that No Shoulder isn't the greatest song musically though, because it still carries the same zoomed out theme that this record brings up time and time again, to recognize that certain things don't work out for a reason, and they might just bring us to the next big thing or opportunity. Plus we have the trademark wordplay from Arm Brewster again with possession, not possessions. That'll finally set us free as humans. Now the major takeaway for me on the album Possession is how it stacks up with Joy Wave's previous works. In fact, I would admit that it is a nice balance of their first two records. We have the catchy hooks from their first album smushed together with the atmosphere of their second, maybe even sounding uh, even more ambitious in the production style. For me, my favorite record by Joy Wave remains to be their first, but Possession offers up an irresistible batch of tunes with more dynamic and commendable deep cuts along with daring production. As Arm Brewster and the group let us know, sometimes it's good to just want to be fat and old and happy. Seriously though, Possession hits the nail on the head with the hammer. It is the perfect time to be releasing this record during the state of chaos and turmoil that we're currently living through as the human species, as much as I would like to see us not living through this at the moment. Um, but yeah, with this Joy Wave record, it is also the perfect timestamp. Yeah. <laughs> 
uh, for 2020 as a year in history as well. Moreover, I appreciate how Joywave's website pokes fun at the advertisements that we are constantly overexposed to. Uh, this group just has a lot of great things going for it. A great sense of humor, talented multi-instrumentalists, great chemistry with each other. I think the only downside going for Joywave is how they're not well known in the music industry. I think people have been sleeping on them for the past five, six years. Meanwhile, they're quietly carrying over their gift of album writing into the 2020s. I'm just here hoping that more people will discover their music this decade, and they're starting it off on a pretty good note with Possession. I am feeling an 8 out of 10 on this record. There's the review of Joywave's latest LP. Sound off down below in the comments. Let me know what you think of this music. Agree or disagree, I'm here to engage with you guys. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new in town. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a rockin' day.